Hello, hello, my name is Thomasine and welcome to my first knitting podcast. I'm coming to you from Stockholm, Sweden. I'm a nursing student and my main hobbies are crochet and knitting. I design crochet wear and knit wear and I sell it. Um, I dream to make patterns soon, that would be really fun to release some patterns, but so far I just use my Instagram page to document my crochet and knit journey and then sell some odd pieces on a website and via DM. I just wanted to say that my Instagram handle, my YouTube name and my brand slash company clothing brand name is Virkbinsessam and it's Swedish and directly translates to Crochet Princess. To give you some background, I really want to create intentional fashion. I do not like fast fashion and I started this also because it was sustainable, slow fashion. I use natural fibres. I try to use natural fibres. Sometimes because I thrift all my yarn, you get your odd acrylics mixed in. Um, but that's sometimes that happens, but I aim to use as much natural yarn as I can and I buy it at thrift stores, I buy it off people who need to minimise their stash and I buy it from farms across Sweden because then I, where I know that it's been locally produced, the animals have lived a good life, they've been well treated and other sustainable companies or farms in Europe. So that's what I focus on. Let's start with the knitting podcast. My first category is T-O-P, T of the podcast. And I think I left, yes, I did save the packet. It's the Anastasia Kuzmi tea. Um, and it's a orange blossom flavored black tea with bergamot and lemon. So I've got my teacup here and it's really good. So recommend. The next part is my FOs, my finished projects. And I've only got one finished project for you today. And it's, I just came home from holiday with my boyfriend. And during holiday, I knit this eyelet bandana. It's a self drafted pattern. Um, and I've never made a bandana and I've never made eyelets before. And I knitted this in a second hand yarn. By the feel of it, I'm guessing it's 100% wool, white wool, and I did it with four millimeter needles. And here are my eyelets. And I'm thinking of making a pattern for this. So if somebody's interested, do comment so I know. Now on to my whips, my works in progress. The one that's consuming most time at the moment. Let's see if I can hold her up so you can see, is this sweater. I found the pattern on Ravelry. It's by Wool and Beyond for Svarta Fåret and it's her, it's called the Arho sweater. Um, make sure it's the right direction and it looks like this. It's a, actually it's a men's sweater but I love oversized. Got, I don't know if you can see, it's a saddle shoulder going. I stopped halfway through because I needed to try it on and see how I felt about the size. Um, so yeah, but I, when I tried it on, I really loved it. And I started on the sleeve over here. That's what I'm doing right now, just to check what I think to see if I wanna change anything. But yeah, I love this. And I'm knitting it, I sized up to five millimeter needles instead of four. And the yarn that I'm using is also thrifted. This is from a lady's, a kind lady here in Sweden, her stash. And it's a fashion soft linen mix. Looks like this. And then to spice it up a bit, I had also this thrifted yarn in my stash, which is this poppis printed yarn. And as you can see, it's got this sort of gray color gradient. And this one's wool and acrylic but I really like the way that you get the stripes um, and I think it adds something extra to a basic grey sweater. 
Another whip that I'm working on is also, it's another bandana, this one without eyelets. So now we're going to see she is on my four millimeter New York's right now. Oh, this lighting is terrible, I know, but I'll get better until next time. It's in this dark blue 100% merino wool. It's without eyelets. And as you can see, I've got lots of ends because it's attached to an old bucket hat that I didn't like because the merino wool, well, it was too floppy for the bucket hat model. So now I'm making another bandana following my pattern, but without the eyelets. So hopefully then I'll be able to make two patterns in one. The next segment is gonna be acquisitions. And I'm gonna start off, we'll start off small and then gradually it will get to more exciting things. So first is this bag of thrifted, Sort of apricot orangey yarn. I'm trying to see, it doesn't really say what's in it, but I'm guessing it's a wool acrylic. It's actually quite sort of, I can guess it would be itchy on the skin, so I don't know what I'd use this for. Maybe an accessory, a bag or something. And I got about, oh wait, maybe here we can see. Oh, it's actually mohair wool and then only 10% acrylic. And I've got, actually I've got four of them. Maybe it could be a vest that you anyway wear under or over something so then it's not itchy on the skin. Yeah, I like that colour. Then another bag of secondhand yarn. And this is the Peyton's Colibri. So I'm trying to open the bag. So this is also a mohair and then a bit of a colic fibre. So this one's already much softer. God, I'm trying to, this lighting. So it's this sort of, I don't know if you can see, it's this, here you can maybe see. It's this sort of wine red purple shade. And I've got, I don't know, but I've got quite a few. I think it's at least like eight skeins. I had a sweater or I want to make a sweater with that. I love that color. So that's what I have in mind for that yarn. Now on to my third acquisition, which is actually, it's not knitting or crochet related. It's a bit fashion related, but I figured that's also a big interest of mine. So I want to let you in on that part of me too. So I want to show you the latest shoes that I've bought. And these are the Wales Bonner Adidas Samba Leopard. And I got these, I thrifted these, or I got these secondhand, completely unused with the box, dust bag, everything. They were super trendy. Um, and I'm aware of that. And I didn't buy them then when they were super trendy. And then I gave them a few years, I don't know, maybe it's two years, uh, and maybe it's only one. But I found them again, and I could not go for it, so I ended up buying them, and I love them, and that's also how I knew that it wasn't just a trend for me, I wasn't influenced to buy them, because I really love them, and I love the blue details, and the sort of pony calf skin. Yeah, super comfortable shoes. My last acquisition is sort of the grand finale, this is really big. Wool and the Gang, whom you might know of, so kindly reached out to me on DM, via DM on Instagram, and messaged me and asked if I wanted to be part, or if I wanted to receive a gift from them. And sorry for the noise, I wasn't gonna turn that down. So they so kindly sent me the pattern for their new rose tank that they've created together with Rose Swan. And it's crochet, it's their shiny happy cotton that also has the um, Crafting a Better Future logo. Editing Thomasine here again. I wanted to tell you a bit about Wool and the Gang's Crafting a Better Future. With their logo that they put on some yarns, you can know what yarns are planet friendly. All their yarns don't use any harmful dyes or any bad chemicals. Wool and the Gang want to document 
our journey on becoming a better, more sustainable business and brand. And that's why they have this logo. I chose, so you chose two colors for the base. I chose this gorgeous midnight blue color. It's really, really dark. And that was what I wanted because I thought it's got holes in it. And then I thought that I can wear a dark bra under it without it showing. So I don't have to worry about having anything under anything else. And then for the sort of accent colors, the details on the shoulder, I chose this adorable candy pink color. And along with a the pattern, they gave me a five millimeter needle. Always need needles. And then a darning needle. It's great, can't have too many of those. And this was really sweet. It's made unique by me while I'm the gang. It's a small label that you can put into your finished project, which I think is so cute. So thank you, Will and the Gang. Now, lastly, I know I said that Will and the Gang was the last thing, but I just saw um, another acquisition that I haven't told you about. So I walked past a thrift store um, on the countryside and I picked up two sets of buttons. I've actually not added buttons to any of my prior works, but I need to start because look, look how cute this button is. Can you see that there's, it's like a dark, it's a dark brown. Where's the focus? It's got a star. And we have 15 in here and they cost me like under a pound. So that was lovely. And here we have the second pair, a light version. Here you can see the sort of the star. And there also they cost me a pound and I got 12. Can you see the star? I don't know if you can see the star. There's the star. So that was all the acquisitions. I'm just going to have this sit away to me. So... The next part is going to be my WTFs, which is works to frog. It's sad, but it needs to. I'm thinking that this can be a way for me to hold accountability to make sure nothing just lies in my pile and doesn't get worn because there's something that I don't like. So this is my unicorn vomit sweater is what I call it because the colours, it's a rainbow, but it's kind of dark. And it's a sweater that I really, really love. Wait, sorry. Um, but the collar isn't, it just, it's weird. It's too long and it sticks up in a funny way. So I'm thinking that I want to redo it and do a folded collar so that I actually end up wearing it because now it's sort of, it's weird. It just doesn't match the overall fit. But otherwise, I love this sweater. And yeah, I, it needs help. So that was my what I want to frog. After my works to frog uh, is current inspiration and I'm going to start with media and currently or currently I've been watching knitting podcasts for quite a while now and I'm very inspired by the lovely Hanan here on YouTube and Mariel um, and they make me want to knit socks and I never thought that I was going to say that I have no interest in socks until I saw their videos and they do the cutest colour combinations and Hanan and I have had some contact on Instagram and she's the sweetest and she also gave me a boost to start this podcast. And then as for podcasts, I love to listen to Lexi Lombard. She also has a YouTube channel and then she went over to podcasting and it's called the At Lexi Podcast. I think I've listened to every episode. Love her and I love her voice just great to listen to so really do check her out over to music i'm got i've put three songs just to give you a small taste of what i've been listening to right now and what i'm obsessed with and one is heat by tova low and sj lewis so he's a dj i think and she's a swedish well now she's world famous singer love that song it's sort of like a dj or it's what's it called like a dance song and I just like the beat, I like the words, it makes me want to dance. I like to listen to it when I'm cooking. Then I've got Mood Ring by Lord, written also 
didn't listen to it really when it came out and now I just had a resurgence so I've been listening to it lots and I think you should do the same because it's great and then lastly it's the 1036 by Biba Doobie I don't know if I'm saying that right I think she's lovely she's great I love that song yeah check them out for books I just finished listening to Our Kind of Traitor by John Lecaire. I'm probably not saying his last name right. I've got really severe dyslexia, so I don't read anymore because it makes me too tired and takes up way too much of my energy and I'm trying to study on top of that. So I listen to audiobooks and that's the way that I read. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. So I just finished Our Kind of Traitor I really like that one. Now I'm going to watch the movie. I waited with watching it until I finished the book. And I've read it once before when I was younger. And now I wanted to re-listen to it because not a lot of the information goes in when I try to read. Not always anyway. And I've also finished, but that was about a week ago, uh, My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otessa. I don't really want to say her last name. Moshfed? I don't know if that's right. Anyway. My Year of Rest and Relaxation also thought that was a fun read. I enjoyed it. I liked the witty writing. It was interesting. It was completely different to anything else I've read before. Um, and currently, I'm listening to Leo Tolstoy's Anna Karenina. It's a classic. And I was listening to Evelyn Hugo's Seven Husbands book and... Evelyn Hugo, the main character, stars in an Anna Karenina film. And that sort of maybe, a, hmm, what's Anna Karenina? And then I started listening. After that, what I want to buy, another book, is The Voyage Out by Virginia Woolf. I don't know, I saw somebody on YouTube who had bought it and it just looked sweet. I like reading classics, so I put it to my list and hopefully I will have started reading it to my next podcast. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that you will want to see me again and I hope I get a chance to do this again and that that podcast will be longer, more detailed. I want to keep doing this because it's fun, I love watching them and I think it's a fun way to be part of the community because it's a lovely knitting and crocheting community on YouTube. And everything that I've mentioned today in the video will be linked down below. And I'll also link my Instagram, my Ravelry, and a website where you can buy or browse and potentially shop my products. I don't think the sortiment is up to par at the moment. I think it's actually quite a lot of winter things, like winter hats. So ignore that. But I will be doing drops and I will keep you informed whenever they go live. Thank you so much. Bye.